Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Grit, Give, Recognize, Implement Time podcast. I'm your host, Steve Nathanson, CEO and founder of Strive for More. Today, we're going to continue the conversation that we started last episode and talk a little bit differently and now orient it towards team strategy. So today, we're tackling the question of how do I create a strategy for my team? We talked a lot about some techniques last time in terms of finding what our end post is. And that's where I want to start here. It's very applicable as well. For my team specifically, what organizational guidance do we have? Do you have OKRs, goals, expectations, anything along that line or those lines that have already been set up and defined for you that we can draw upon for our end post. There also may come a time where the team is new, it's just being stood up. So in that case, what purpose was this team stood up for? Is there a mission that the team is going to fulfill? And even in teams that currently exist, what is the, the team's own mission statement? What's the vision for the team? What did the prior manager have? Again, all great starting points for us. Once we know this, then we can clearly define what that end post is to be able to back out of it. And just like last week when we're talking about a time frame and we were using a one year example, what is the time frame that we're looking to create a strategy for? Is it one year? Is it shorter? Let's say we've got to figure it out for end of the year uh, and maybe we're in May. And so we're going to plan for the second half of the year, right? And it's just six months. Maybe we're asked to do a long-term vision, three years, five years. Those are going to be important because they are going to determine to what extent can we actually get detailed in terms of our strategy. The further out it is, the higher level it'll probably be. We don't need greater detail at the moment. So with that, how do we actually do this? When we know what the end post is, it's also good to know where are we now? What's our starting point? So where are we? Because that tells you what that gap is. How far do we have to go? That can be very important for the strategies of, say, taking the team into the future, developing new products, shifting uh, from an example we gave last time of, say, very hardware focused and actual client locations to cloud based services. We need to know where we are, we need to know where we're going, and then we can fundamentally create that strategy, right? Nothing new then from last time. What's different is when we talk about the team, there becomes elements of who's on my team now, how can they help fulfill part of this strategy, and what am I perhaps missing? If we look at it this from a, say, football team analogy on defense, maybe we've got great secondary, so we've got great cornerbacks, we have great safeties, but we're missing being able to stop the run. And so we need to strengthen, say, linebackers and offense, excuse me, defensive linemen. Same thing here for the team. We have to know the players on our team. What are their strengths? What are the gaps? What knowledge bases do they have and do they not have? How does that impact our strategy? Because maybe part of this is I need different personnel. I need additional personnel. Maybe the team structure itself as well is not set up currently for where we want it to go in this strategy. So we have to realign things. Maybe we create a couple team leads. We break the team into two sections, perhaps. However that may play out, those are additional factors that become important when we talk about creating team strategies. 
So let's get into actually, how do we do this? So again, when we know our end post and we know our starting post, and we know the time frame we're looking to define that for, then it becomes easier in a broad sense to start defining things and working our way back. So let's say it's a five-year vision. And within the next five years, we want to achieve X. With that being the goal, what is realistic perhaps to achieve in four years or three years, two years, one year? We can define yearly benchmarks. We can even do that in a three-year plan. Where do we want to be at year one, year two, and year three? Part of this is also the reasonableness of it. When we have done things before, we have a much better grasp on what time it does take to implement things. Even if we've not done it and it's industry kind of standards or other people have done it, we can rely on those resources and those examples to help us reasonably estimate our own time frame, accounting for kind of who we are as an organization, who we are as a team. This becomes harder when we are trying to do something that's unknown, we've not done before, and it's new. We may be able to put together kind of a guesstimate, but in the strategic plan, there has to be an element of wiggle room to allow that to actually plan out over time, excuse me, play out over time to say, you know what, we planned for six months. Once we've gotten into it now or two months in, this is actually going to be longer. Sometimes that happens. That's very real world experience. We don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, right, is another way of saying that. So as we're building out the strategy, we need to have flexibility in it around what those goalposts are, those different milestones, and also be able to put in a reasonable guess. Or if we need to, create a little bit of a buffer. You know what, I'm not sure. Seems like maybe four months or six months, we can plan for that six months. That doesn't mean that we ultimately have to go with that. It at least gives us a starting point. So when we build out the milestones for say year four, year three, year two, year one, are they really reasonable? We have to do that check. Because let's say we say in year one, this is what we're going to achieve and it's just wholeheartedly unrealistic and you're way behind schedule, we've now overpromised something. We're not delivering on it. It's going to be a lot of stress. It's going to be a lot of heartache. You're going to break apart the team. You're going to have people who are burnt out, disengaged. It's going to be a big mess. So that is one of the reasons behind doing this reasonable check for those intermediate milestones. One of the examples I gave last time about breaking things down from a year is also applicable here. Once we've planned out our high level goals and objectives at each year, we don't necessarily need to plan out all five years by quarter. We can just start with year one. Maybe we want to do say one and two, completely you dependent. But the way to back out of that is, okay, with the goal at the end of the year, what is it that we want to achieve in say Q3, Q2, Q1 by those end points? Or if we want to do it through halves like H1, H2, some organizations will do that, up to you. But we can start backing out, essentially year, quarter, month, and then week. A lot of companies, you work in sprints, a lot of agile type of mindsets. So we work in two week sprints. What's nice in the strategy is for the month, we may know ultimately where we want to get to in that month. And then instead of doing it by week, we could do it by two week sprint of where we want to head. So we can start broadly at say our yearly milestones and then work our way backwards to shorter time frames and smaller manageable objectives. Oftentimes we will run into a big overwhelming issue. There's too much. I don't know how to accomplish it. It's fair. It's very commonplace. How do we overcome that? It's by eating the elephant one bite at a time, creating smaller manageable chunks that are truly achievable. So with all of this being said, 
to really more pinpointingly and concisely answer this question of how do I create a strategy for my team? First and foremost, what are the end posts? We may have OKRs, goals, expectations, mission statements, purposes, prior visions that can help us do that. Then we need to understand where are we now so that we know what that gap looks like and then can more reasonably chunk it up over our time frame, which is also key to know, to implement that strategy. Once we've gone from that high level, then we can back down by say year, quarter, month, week, or two week sprint, as we were just talking about, to redefine smaller chunks and keep us tangibly making progress towards that goal. The other elements that come into play are also, what do I need for my team to be able to achieve this? Maybe we need new personnel, additional personnel, fill knowledge gaps by bringing in more people or getting our people training. What's the structure of the team look like? Is it going to meet where we want to go? Or do we need to redefine that? Do I need team leads? Do I need to break it up into, say, two? These are good questions because that's also part of where we're headed. It's also critical to help us actually accomplish that as well. One thing I have not yet mentioned with this, but I'll bring it up now, is policies, procedures, and processes. We may need to build out new policies, processes, and procedures to be able to achieve what we want as well. That can be part of the strategic plan. Okay, if we're going to get here, this is something new for the company, we need to define those guide rail, guidelines, those guardrails, if you will. Here's how we're going to do that. New policy, new procedure, new processes. That's also a part of the strategy as well. There's definitely more we can dive into uh, on strategy for the specific scenarios that you're facing, but at a high level, broad sense, here's how we create a strategy for a team. So I truly hope that you've enjoyed today. And remember, till the next time, be the movement in your life. Thank you.